Well, America's changing, and it's changing fast, and there's no question about that. Uh, there are bigger issues about, is this change that we want? Who's bringing on this change and all the rest of it? But we find ourselves now in a, in a situation where the, the battle lines and the culture war are becoming sharper and sharper. And I think it's important to know which side you're on. I wish it didn't have to call it that way. It'd be nice to not have to discuss it that way, but it seems crystal clear to me. I'm Bill Whittle with Steve Green and Scott on. Uh, gentlemen, the thing that I that, that I think is uh, telling is from an art article on Instapundit, probably Steve posted, I guess. Um, but basically, uh, Nikki Haley, who's running for uh, Republican uh, challenger for, for uh, president in 2024, had something to say about Ron DeSantis and his fight against Disney in Florida. And this is where I think we need to get to the, where are you, where do you stand on the big, bigger issues? So let me just read the, the, the tweet first. Um, I'm quoting from the story here, and it says, uh, Hey, Disney, my home state will happily accept your 70,000 plus jobs if you want to leave Florida. We've got great weather, great people, and it's always a great day in South Carolina. SC's not woke, but we're not sanctimonious about it either. Sanctimonious, yeah. of course, is Ron, San, Ron de Sanctimonious. So, so the, this doesn't just apply to Nikki Haley. It applies to everything else. Disney, Budweiser, Fox News Now, all of these events are showing us that there is an enormous philosophical divide among Americans, a huge and, and growing philosophical divide among Americans. And I'm just really quite shocked at the kind of the tone deafness of that, Steve. Uh, Disney used to be a six-letter shorthand for wholesomeness yes. for my, virtually my entire life. When people would not go to Disney movies because they were considered too wholesome, they're too G-rated. They're just you know, and, and when Disney, when Disney turns that sharply, and they decide to have a political reaction to this in Florida, this is something that, as a conservative, I applaud enthusiastically because it's some it's some fighting back against this endless encroachment. And so for for a GOP politician to say, hey, Disney, you know, you, you want to with the episode we did on moving Disney World actually got pretty good numbers uh, these days. And it doesn't seem feasible, obviously, number one. So why would she do something like that? Do you think? Because to me, this is not this is a no brainer to me on which side of this Disney fence you want to be on, on which side of the Bud Light fence you want to be on, on which side of the Tucker Carlson fence you want to be on. These are clear choices to me. And. I don't see how how somebody doesn't see that. Frankly. You know, I, uh, I I don't watch Tucker Carlson. Uh, I, I don't watch any of that stuff. I, I'm too busy, you know, writing and creating my own content. Me too. But I don't have to, to, to watch or even approve of Tucker Carlson, although I think he's a, 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 a funny, sharp, and a, a razor sharp at times guy. Um, but I, I don't have to be a viewer to go, wow. Fox News really screwed up, and I'll, I'll go into a little bit of that in um, in my segment this week. Um, I don't have to disown Disney's brilliant back catalog of, of entertainment to say, wow, are they screwing up right now? In fact, I'd go a little further. I'd say Disney's real crime here isn't is an exercise in their corporate First Amendment rights on a on an issue. They they can certainly do that. Disney's real crime is what they've done to their own intellectual property. Um, Star Wars is dead. Um, we we got two and a half. We got two seasons of uh, of Mandalorian. Third season's utter crap. And with that, Star Wars, the, the last good thing of Star Wars is is dead. Uh, the MCU, it's on life support. Um, Pixar has been on a slow creative decline um, over the last probably uh, eight or ten years. It's just it's it's not where it used to be. Probably never going to come back. Uh, these Disney live-action remakes of their of their own properties, Littlest, Little Mermaid, are so just on. miserable. And uh, I haven't seen it. I'm not. I'm not going to watch it. Uh, in part because I canceled my Disney Plus subscription a while back. Um, but I've seen the uh, the trailers in in several clips from the the Wendy and Peter Pan movie that's that is out. Mm -hmm. And there is something about the actors that makes them look. Like they're on the wrong side of the uncanny valley. 
Um, yeah. There's there's there, there's something very strange going on there. And, and Wendy is a girl boss, super warrior, ninja, sure. sword fighter, and yeah, okay, you know, sure, all of that stuff. So they they've wokeified Peter Pan, and and what one of my one of my favorite stories of all time is Peter Pan. What are you going to do? Um, so this this is the real crime that Disney is committed. It, 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 this sullying, this soiling of of not just their intellectual property, but a beautiful chunk of American culture. Um, I I I I can still remember very vaguely going to the movies for the very first time. It was 1972. I was three years old, and it was a re-release of Mary Poppins. And I saw it mm-hmm. on what at the time was the biggest movie theater screen in St. Louis. is at the Esquire Theater. And just, oh, what a time I had. And I've been, I've been a movie fan ever since. Um, and why, let me yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting back to why, Mickey why do you, here. Why do you think? Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Uh, I but I, I needed to set the stage here for, for what's going wrong. Um, Nikki Haley's crime is failing, I think, to see the big picture. I think she's thinking tactically of, okay, Ron DeSantis has, has got this, uh, he's got this political capital kind of cornered. He's, he's got the chips on, on the culture war right now because Donald Trump's been on the wrong side of the Disney thing. So uh, what, what am I going to do to differentiate myself as a candidate, not as a patriotic American, not as a, a lover and consumer of American culture, but in this moment, what can I do to differentiate myself from from Ron DeSantis? And she's trying this triangulation thing. Oh, I don't approve of Disney, but I'm not uh, all huffy about it. I'm not, not all sanctimonious about it, like 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 Ron DeSantis is. Well, putting the politics aside, which you have to do in this case, putting the politics aside of her stupid move, this this pathetic attempt at triangulation. She's not standing up for the stuff that is good in this country. And that, that's, that's where I, don't, I don't care what other stand she takes in politics. If you don't stand up for the goodness of American culture, which was, I think, Reagan's secret. He just loved this country inside and out. If you're not going to take a stand to protect what's good about this country, then you have no business even seeking the highest office of the land. Scott, I know you're very sensitive to this uh, divisiveness and and uh, this idea of like a culture war and so on, but I think in this case you can actually apply some uh, some real world military um, analogies. And, and I'm thinking one specifically, and that is virtually every war that's happened has an aggressor. There is an aggressor. There's a person responsible. World War II happened because Adolf Hitler kept taking territories and he invaded Poland. That was the that was the spark. He was the aggressor. The Japanese were the aggressors at Pearl Harbor, and everything that followed after that is a result of that aggression. And when I say there's a culture war, I think the reason there's a culture war is because of the aggression on the left. The left could come up with their own movies, could come up with their own animation things, with their own values, but that's not what they do. They 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 put their values into existing properties that conservatives find to be wholesome and wonderful, and they are, they are, what's the word I'm looking for? They are intruding on our cultural landscape and trying to change it. They're not trying to make their own movies. We, uh, we wouldn't have any problems if they were making their own movies. They're rewriting our culture. They seem to be the aggressors in this case, and what Disney has become over the years has become the antithesis of what everybody knew Disney to be. And look, Disney is named after a guy. Disney is Walt Disney. Walt Disney was the was the the genius who saw Disneyland in his mind, who saw all of these animated movies, and his company, which has his name on it, has now become the antithesis of what Walt was. And that's because of what I consider to be cultural aggression. Do you agree with that, or do you think that's overstating the case? Um. Y- I I agree with that up to a point, but I'm not sure that it's relevant. And here's what I mean. Um, First of all, Disney is not Walt Disney anymore. Um, It is so utterly different than when Walt was in charge of it that you can't call it. I mean, it's got his name on it, uh, but it's, you know, the McDonald's brothers haven't been flipping burgers under the golden (laughs) arches in a lot of years. (laughs) And McDonald's is, if they were to come back from the dead and see what McDonald's was today, they would have no idea. It was like, really, that was our restaurant? We, (laughs) I mean, I recognize the golden arches, but that's about it. Um, And so, you know, I, I think... 
our our conservatism tends to also be a nurturing of nostalgia in the extreme to uh, to the extent that we want to hang on to everything that we had. You know, I, before we went on here, we were talking about gun smoke and it was like, you know, and, and all three of us are like, yeah, yeah, gun smoke was great and, and stuff like that. But gun smoke, if you put it on TV today, would be like, oh, what is this? Some sort of slow moving soap opera? <laughs> Like it would be, it would be agonizing for the modern generation. Things change, and and that's that's part of life. Nikki Haley's big mistake here, I think, is not really having anything to do with Disney. It's it's going after DeSantis. DeSantis isn't her problem, at least not at this point. <laughs> and nobody has the guts to stand up and go after the guy who's leading in the polls. And so, you know, if Nikki Haley really wanted to strike out at somebody and show herself to be a, a potential uh, candidate for the Republican nomination for the presidency, she's got to go after the big dog. And right, and so far, you know, she's gone after the little dog at this point. Now, DeSantis obviously is probably the prime threat to the big dog, but even he at this point is not, it, it seems unlikely. Um, I don't think, um, I think that DeSantis is winning both with Haley and with Trump in the sense that he's defining the battle space. What are we talking about? DeSantis and Disney. What is everybody talking about? DeSantis and Disney. Why is this even a topic in a presidential election year, but both the, the former president of the United States and the former uh, you know, secretary to the, to the UN are, are both talking about DeSantis and what he's doing with Disney. Now, in my perfect world, politicians would have virtually nothing to say about entertainers and cultural issues and would stick to their knitting. And if DeSantis has anything to do with Disney, it would be with the Disney Corporation with regard to its uh, land holdings or taxation or other things that are relevant. If, if Disney gets uh, is insinuating itself into public schools that are funded by the state, then yes, that's, that's the purview of uh, state government and DeSantis would have something to do with that. I don't like staging these so-called culture war battles so that we could, you know, strut around and, and make ourselves seem like we really have the pulse of America. And then when you get into office, you really do nothing. You do nothing about that at all. Um, and, and that just makes me sad. So, you know, in, in my perfect world, no commentary about entertainment. Uh, Nikki Haley goes after the real leader of the pack, and, uh, and Ron DeSantis is not able to be effective at defining a battle space in a presidential race as a spat between him and Mickey Mouse. Oh, is, hang on, Scott. Let me, let, me, let me say something real quick. Um, I'm not sure that politicians would have much to say about entertainers if entertainers weren't getting so political. And, and, yeah, and but that's, it, that's silly for us to take up that battle, though. Like, we should it, – it's, it's, it's a flea. That's a bug that's buzzing around that your ba- head. The and, battle isn't over whether the last Marvel movie sucked or not. The battle is, 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 is over the woke part that is, do, that is mutilating prepubescent girls and boys. This is where it becomes political. When it gets to – Issues D- of health care, when it gets to mental health stuff. treatments, yes. when it's stuff like that, yet then I think the governor's remarks on that or action on that needs to be related to government, needs to which be related is, to the police power of the state which or the ability to direct been, funding. In, in, uh, and I'm not saying I'm not saying DeSantis is doing anything wrong with that. Well, I'm marveling that he's able to so effectively define the, the battle space. Yeah. But I think that conservatives constantly whining about the fact that that, uh, you know, some modern a- entertainment executives who apparently are better capitalists than red blooded Republicans. Oh, ever no, will they are be. not. Disney has lost more market <laughs> cap than any other. Any and, other and we're we're angry at them for, on the, for on the on the uh, we're angry the at them for for circling the drain. <laughs> no, we're not angry at them for Scott. circling the drain. We're angry at them for promoting the mutilation of children and the sexualization of children. And, and I'm not I ask, I'm not going to. I agree with that. Again, I don't think it's a presidential issue. But go ahead, go ahead, Bill. Sorry. All right. I mean this sincerely. I'm not looking for a fight. Okay. Uh, the gun smoke argument, hey, society changes and we just might as well just get used to it. Oh. And, and holding this idea of holding this nostalgic kind of thing makes you seem like, you know, oh, you know, just get off my lawn, you why damn kids. So, much so, my honest question, so my honest question for you is, without, w- with the greatest respect, if, if it turned out that people were rewriting the Bible 
which is also old and slow moving, and um, and rewriting the Bible, and then and then using the power of the state to make sure that this version of the Bible, which was constantly changing and becoming less and less like the Bible and more and more like the anti-Bible, if if the power of the state meant that this would be taught in churches, would you have a problem with that? Now, if if Disney is using state government or national government power, not talking about Disney, power, is not that talking about Disney. No, no, no. I'm not talking about What's Disney. the analogy I'm you're making? Saying I'm saying that, that, that this fil- it out. okay. So this philosophy, this philosophy is being taught and enforced in public schools that are paid for by Florida taxpayers, and they and Florida children are being not just Florida children, but they're being indoctrinated with a with a philosophy that they didn't ask for. These these. These woke teachers are bringing their personal politics and looking for their personal, uh, you know, affirmations from yeah. three-year-old kids. Hey, I just, I, I, me and my girlfriend, you know, we're, we're, you know, this, this is happening. So my question is, if it doesn't seem to matter to you that it happens in the culture, would it bother you if it happened in the Bible? Would it bother you if, if there was a state? sponsored church that was then teaching this because that's what's happening in schools. Well, a a couple of things here. First of all, I I didn't say it didn't bother me. What I said is it shouldn't be an issue in a presidential campaign what Disney and DeSantis are talking about. Um, That to me is not an, an issue of national scope that you run on to get elected, but maybe that's how it is these days. I'm also not saying that we shouldn't make great shows like Gunsmoke anymore. What I'm saying is if you think that there, we are lacking in great entertainment, or if somebody's ruined Star Wars, we'll make something better than Star Wars, and and oh, there's with a lot the of kind of values that you that you want to have in it. Yeah, and there's stuff out there. So I think oh, the mistake we're making is we're we're trying to we're upset that Disney got a hold of these properties that we valued and and is corrupting them in ways that we don't like and is injecting social values issues in it that we don't like and stuff like that. And and yeah, that's kind of sad, but. I, I don't have any allegiance to those movie franchises or TV franchises. Which is and which is why I asked you. So the, with the Bible, which is the why answer I asked is, you Bill, if this was happening to the Bible. The answer is how would you feel about it? It has happened to the Bible. It's constantly happening to the Bible. People are continually coming up with new interpretations and new translations of the Bible, and there's always a big debate over it in various in churches that care anyway um, about you know wh- which translation of the Bible is most most faithful to the original text and things like that. Now these days we don't so much have state endorsed religion, but in the early days of the founding of this country we certainly did. Um, you know the, the the colonies were uh, you know you you went to the colony. Uh, you knew what the 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 stand the religious stand of the colony you lived in was when you lived in it. So no, I don't think the state ought to be involved in the promoting of this. And it's a whole different issue with the schools. You got a, a much bigger problem there. But frankly, Bill, those same teachers who are coming in and doing that to those students at that local level, wherever that's happening are beloved by the parents of the children that they're doing it to. And if you ask any parent, they will say, oh, yes, Mrs. So-and-so is the best teacher ever. Oh, my daughter loves her. And that phenomenon of, hey, I hate what's happening in the culture, but I love my congressman or I or I love my school uh, teacher. Your your, your view of the relationship might be a little outdated. What's that? Yeah, the uh, the re- the 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 temperature in school board meetings would argue against yeah. that. I, I think uh, you're vastly yeah. overestimating the widespread nature of the protests in the school board meetings. You can make a lot of noise in a small school board meeting and make it seem like a big dang deal, but the vast majority of parents don't show up. And I sat on school boards and I covered school boards for years. I, I know what that kind of setting is like. And frankly, I was a rabble rouser who once stirred up a crowd of about 600 people to show up at a school board meeting. <laughs> over something. So I I know what that's like. But the reality is most parents do not show up at school board meetings. Most parents don't stand up and speak out. And most parents love their kid's teacher and think he or she is doing a great job and don't really see the connection between what they see talked about in in the punditry or on the news and what's actually happening in their school district. They think, oh, well, that must be happening somewhere else. And so if you're going to make a difference in that respect, you need to be active in the local districts. You need to get people on school boards who will make a difference and who will have a bigger voice in the curriculum. And you need to wrench the curriculum out of the hands of the federal or state governments and not be taking the money from those federal and state governments and then therefore have to dance to their tune. 
I would. Uh, I I'm going to take one more. I'm going to take one more swing okay. at this, uh, <laughs> just because I think this is no, because I think this is really important. The the kind of people that are working for Disney, the, the the people who they are advocating and so on, it's not uncommon to hear some of these trans activists or gay rights activists saying that God is gay. Would you have a problem with that being taught as in a church that God was gay? If that we're, we're not talking about nuances yeah, of that definitions, we're, now, we're church, not talking about translations. No, no, I would, I would clearly not be part of a church like that. So yeah, would I? Would that be a problem for me? Yes, in the, in the sense that I'm not going to show up there. <laughs> so I'm not going to so go just, and hang out with a bunch of people who are lying. So that's just not. So if you saw this spread, so if you saw this spreading throughout the culture, and becoming the new truth, you'd be okay with just kind of no. saying. No, I think okay, you're misinterpreting. Because, you're 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 assuming that because I'm trying not to. You're assuming that because I don't want to make it a political issue, but rather a cultural issue needs to be dealt with with cultural so-called you know tools. Um, that therefore I don't care about it. My answer to to all the devastation that's happening to the culture is that there are lots of people out there who think like you and I do, who could be attending and and streaming and subscribing to and making the kinds of content we say we want and it would bleed the others dry either disney has an audience or it doesn't if it doesn't it can't last long i mean it's a big company but little by little it'll fall apart if it can't attract an audience do we need to speak out Yes, but I think we're more effective at doing it if we make stuff that people like that reinforces the values that we believe without just preaching to them, which frankly is the downfall of the left. They take over something that was entertainment and they turn it into a lecture and that destroys it. And that's why it bleeds audience. Yeah, which is what Disney's right. doing. But they, keep in mind, nobody's saying they, uh, we're going to tell Disney what movies to make or what movies not to make or what messages they have to include or not include. All Florida did was say, Disney, you're not getting special treatment anymore. You're going to have to compete this is my to, close. toe-to-toe with uh, with Universal Theme Park, and you're not going to be able to, 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 to have all these special uh, self-regulation. And I think they should have said that anyway. Oh, I think they should have said that anyway. <laughs> well, this is a, the issue... Um, the, the DeSantis is being accused of using lawfare against Disney yeah. and using the power of the state to um, to intrude upon a private business, but that's a that's to that's to ignore the elephant in the center of the room, if you'll pardon the expression, or the rhino in the center of the room. Anyway, the, the, that's to ignore the fact that what DeSantis did was he revoked an extraordinarily unusual special privilege yeah. that Disney has been benefiting from since the 19, late 1960s. He simply said, if you're going to go to war with, with the values that most Floridians have, then you can no longer expect us to continue to extend this courtesy to you because of your, because of your wholesomeness. Now, Reedy Creek happened because Reedy Creek was swamp. Orlando was a hitching post. I remember it before Disney World moved in. Disney made Orlando into the number one tourist destination in the world, brought in billions and billions of dollars. You can make a strong case that Reedy Creek was was worth the was worth the, was worth the cost of it. But but this idea that 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 we don't have a chance or we don't have any right to to push back against the people that are that are promoting these ideologies that we find to be repugnant all we're doing in this particular case is we're doing something kind of like a like a don't buy bud light thing hey disney you know what here's the thing if you if you really want to be that antagonistic about things you really want to be that activistic about things that's fine we're going to withdraw this courtesy that we have extended you now for the last god knows 60 years or or more 70 and 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 why would you expect any different I think this is a clear culture war, and I think these three examples of Walt Disney, Bud Light, and and now Fox News are very, very, very clear. And I think the thing about DeSantis is is that DeSantis is a person with some actual power who's doing something to at least try to hold the line. I personally find that to be encouraging. I think a lot of a lot of people in this country do. And when you when you when you basically say, as Nikki Haley did. Hey Disney, uh, Florida's not for you. Essentially, what she's saying is, the governor of Florida is overreacting. Come here to my Republican state and, and bring your seventy thousand jobs with you. I don't think you 
I, I don't think you really fully appreciate what's actually going on here and what the stakes are. This isn't movies. This is our cultural mythology. This is, this is the cultural common language of the country. It's being changed intentionally by people who are being aggressors to the culture. And I think we need to fight back. And I think if we don't, we're going to have the same result as everybody who has, who's ever not fought back before, which is you don't have a culture anymore. Now you've got their culture. You had a chance to defend your own, but you didn't. So too bad for you. For Steve Rin and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Right Angle.